All right, buddy. What is your um, background? Are you like a big book reader or the TV series? Or um, what? I read the I read the books some time ago, probably like when I went, kind of when they came out in the two thousands. Um, and then I've just kind of been keeping up with the TV show as it comes out. I'm not like the biggest fan in the world of them, but I still enjoy watching them. I think that one, um, okay. I don't think that they're the best thing in the world, but I. Do you think it's one of the better shows on TV? Sure. Do you have so, um? Do you have Teamspeak? Yeah, just curious. Uh, let me check on my computer here. Uh, no, I can download it super fast though. Or do you have like automatically adjust microphone stuff? Is that turned on at all in your tools, options, audio settings? Uh, it shouldn't be. Let me check. Some if Skype. Nope. It's all turned off. Oh, weird. Hold on. Is this better? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Skype thing or what, but yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you if it cuts out again. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so just to make sure that we're on the same page about everything so that we don't waste a bunch of time, my contention was that Battle of the Bastards was one of the most disappointing episodes of the entire series very easily, like top two, top three worst episodes. Um, and when I say that, I'm coming at it in terms of character development, story, and writing. I am not talking about the cinematography. I'm not talking about how awesome and cool the battle scenes were. I'm not talking about how epic it was when the troll or whatever. I'm not talking about any of that, okay? Do you understand that? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm following. Okay. So, but on, on the other hand, so just purely from a writing screenplay standpoint, I don't, I personally don't think it was one of the better episodes, but my gripe, I guess, is calling it one of the worst because i think that there are way worse episodes within the series sure. though though at the same time at, at the same time i do understand that like some of my opinion is colored by the fact that the battle was well presented in a visually appealing manner sure which i don't disagree with yeah um so I guess like to set this up, the the reason why I feel like this is one of the worst is because I feel like it killed some of the cool, well, well one of our favorite characters ever. I feel like um, if you were to look for a hero in Game of Thrones, I don't know, I can't speak to um. I can't speak to the books at all, so everything I say is TV show based. But if you were to oh, look yeah. at, okay. if you were to look at like unequivocal like heroes, like that fit all of the classic hero tropes in Game of Thrones, I, I think that the Starks most closely align with that. And you have people like Ned Stark and people like Jon Snow are probably the two cleanest characters in Game of Thrones in terms of pure, unequivocally good people, right? But, Okay, so could we define what a, a Game of Thrones hero is? Because well, well, I, when I say I, that's why I was I said like classic yeah. tropes, like these are noble people. They will go mm. out of their way. So, so, so I'm citing specific things, right? Ned seemed like a really noble dude. It seemed like he had a lot of respect for people. He wanted what was right. So when he started to find out things about like the king having. Um, um, illegitimate children he wanted to figure out like what was right and all of that maybe not ned so much but like john is a very righteous per person he doesn't like that the fat guy gets bullied he sticks up for people that are downtrodden he tries to help out the wildlings um you know against all of the vows of his night's watch and everything so these seem like to me like characters that are kind of like the, the very classic hero like in a classic sure. sense not in like a game of thrones like um jamie's sometimes a good guy or Tyrion is sometimes a good guy like but in a very classic sense these are yeah so so both for for me the starks the male starks are mm -hmm. all about like they'll pursue honor to the exclusion of sometimes reason right where sure. ned does the honorable thing tell cersei and he gets killed for it um john does the honorable thing and saves the wild wildlings and he gets stabbed for it mm -hmm. right and that's in the books so the books end at the end of season five so sure. we don't know what happens in the battle of bastards in the book so we're both coming at it from the same perspective. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from the TV show. Yeah, yeah from the TV show. So, so you're saying that the the battle that that episode undermines uh, John's like honor or well, his character. Well, I'm I'm getting there. So basically, what I'm trying sure, to say yeah. is that like, in terms of like cool characters, like. For me personally, I like the complicated Game of Thrones world, and I like that every character are all different shades of gray, but I also think it's cool to fit a classic hero into a tale like that to see how they interact with the world. Jon yeah. Snow is one of the last really awesome characters remaining in the show. So if you go back in the earlier seasons, it felt like when I'm watching Game of Thrones, like 
every single scene. There was never a moment where it would cut away and you'd be like, oh God, now I have to watch Arya and Joffrey, or now I have to watch Sansa and Joffrey, or now I have to watch The Hound, now I have to watch this fucking, uh, the um, Oberyn dude. Now, like, every single character was awesome, and I loved watching all of them interact. Every interaction was awesome. Fucking all of the Stark dudes were awesome. All of the Lannisters were entertaining. Cersei and her crazy shit. The King's Council. Like, everything was so sick, right? And for me personally, in the first four seasons, every single cut was always just something, and even Cersei's story was really cool in the beginning. Every single cut was was really cool. Like, you watch, Cersei got a little bit old, but for the most part, everything was awesome. But it seems like now we've gotten to Game of Thrones, where, like, every time a new episode came out, I'm like praying like please don't cut to fucking uh please don't cut to um the the one dragon lady what's her name daenerys i don't want to see anything about that fucking city and the slave owner please don't cut it please don't cut to sam and gilly i don't want to see anything with sam and gilly please if you're gonna cut to bram make it something interesting i don't want to see more cryptic shit please like we got into so many moments where i was like no more Dorn. i don't want to see any pussy snakes i don't want to see the fucking lady i just want like the few cool characters Characters, and all of the cool characters are being like removed from like what makes them cool? like Jamie is in some cuck village doing some shit <laughs> and we barely get anything out of Jon Snow and like Sansa's not doing shit and please no more fucking Arya blind bullshit like oh, just just give me like yeah. right so I feel like we're losing um I feel like we're losing like all of the cool things but there was like one cool character okay Jon Snow is a cool character who is still awesome and we followed him from the very 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 beginning of all of Game of Thrones so this is like one character and I like Jon Snow I like the classic hero tropes I like that even though I like Game of Thrones complicated world I like Jon Snow he's hot as fuck he's cool and everything in the story so far has been cool he's one of the last like Stark people like everything is really cool about Jon Snow I love Jon Snow so when I look at something like Jon Snow versus Ramsey. You played a lot of video games. You ever play like you played like Final Fantasy Seven? Yeah, yeah. So well, way back when. Okay, though. so like you you have these classic ways to set up stories. You take a character, you introduce them to somebody insurmountably powerful, they falter, then you go through your hero's journey of figuring out what it is that you need to do to improve yourself, and then you, you're reintroduced to that insurmountable force from before, and then you defeat them, right? Dragon yeah. Ball Z is this uh, times a million. Final yeah. Fantasy 7 was Cloud getting killed by Sephiroth, fucked up completely, over and over again, and then beats him in the end. All of these, um, the, the Batman movies, um, Batman running into the um, the, the bank do it at the end. Um, in the beginning, he gets his ass kicked, comes back and beats him again, right? These are classic mm. ways. Yeah. And in uh, the one guy who did the game reviews, um, the Mega Man guy, Mega Man X running into the one dude that fucks up Zero, and then he gets better than Zero and he kills him. Like, these are classic things, right? So, for a battle of the bastards, okay? For a battle of the bastards, thematically, this is what needs, in my opinion, what needs to happen, okay? Jon Snow is a character who is not without fault, okay? Um, he is naive as fuck. We saw him going off to the Night's Watch because of his naivety, right? He didn't, even in the books, he didn't, he didn't, he had no idea what it meant to go to the Night's Watch. He thought it was a huge thing of honor and shit. Um, mm -hmm. So we saw Jon Snow has problems with naivety. He has problems dealing with complicated feelings, right? He fell in love with that yep. wildling chick, even though he was kind of supposed to kill her, and all of that shit was fucked. Um, so Jon Snow is not a character without faults. He, he's a little headstrong sometimes, right? Yep. So we've watched Jon Snow be now the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Well, no longer now, but he went to Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. He's got battle experience beyond the walls. He's been a commander. He's been in charge of people's lives. He's been responsible for holding down a fort and defending it. Jon Snow as a character should have undergone significant development, okay? So, oh my god, listen, I'm getting fucking goosebumps just thinking about how this should have played out, okay? Because on one hand, we have Jon Snow, this unequivocally good person who's been through all these trials and tribulations. He's gone through all of this shit, and he's grown so much as a fucking character. And then we get Ramsay Bolton, who every single negative possible stereotype kills people, flays people, tortures people, rapes people, every other fucking thing, kills his dad for no reason. And he's in love with it, right? Yeah, he's in and he love loves it. He's the yeah. classic, this is the ultimate confrontation of two completely diametrically opposed characters in the Game of Thrones world. The payoff here, in my opinion, was supposed to be Jon Snow confronting Ramsay. Ramsay, the unstumpable, who has always outwitted his opponent. He's earned every victory, okay? He's always outwitted his opponents, whether it's intellectually, whether it's through backstabbery and deceivery, um, whether it's through pure force, whether it's through battle tactics with um, Stannis, whether it's, you know, he's always earned his victory, and he's done all these amazing things, and now he's coming up against Jon Snow, our previously naive character who should be stumped by Ramsay, but because of his growth and experience as Lord Commander, 
we are going to see an evolved Jon Snow do something that is going to finally outwit Ramsay to make Ramsay earn a defeat. And that's going to be so fucking cool. That's what I was waiting for in this episode. And in the beginning, they made it sound like that's kind of what was happening. Jon Snow was talking about battle plans. We've got to stay back. We've got to let them come to us. Um, you know, we're getting forced into a fight that we don't want to take yet because winter is coming and everything is like really kind of fucking edgy. The wildlings aren't a trained army. Like, how is Jon Snow going to do this? So the payoff is the big scene is supposed to be Jon Snow doing something that shows like he does something. You're like, oh, my God, it's because of his experience as Lord Commander. It's because he was, you know, he experienced all these things. He did something that Ramsay wasn't expecting. And now he defeated Ramsay. And it's the coolest thing in the world. We finally got to see the defeat of Ramsay. We finally got to see Jon Snow's completing his arc of developing as a strong, powerful character. We finally got to see the payoff of all the Night's Watch shit. That's so awesome. But instead what happens is Jon Snow falls directly into the trap that not only did Ramsay set, but Sansa warned him about. So not only did he fall right into the trap, he brought all of the wildlings with him who all should have died with him. And the only reason he defeats Ramsay is because Sansa showed up with an army that she never told him about right at the perfect moment. And to add insult to injury on top of all of that, we got a cheap 1v1 between Jon Snow and Ramsay where Jon Snow gets to kill Ramsay and beat him up on the ground. And I feel like all the normie fucks to watch the show got to jerk off over that scene but it's like that's not the payoff I wanted like these aren't the awesome and like the totally sick fucking feels that I was supposed to get when Jon Snow showed his growth as a character so I'm sorry I've talked for like 20 minutes that's me no, laying no. out why I absolutely yeah, hated yeah, absolutely. that episode more than almost any other because it destroyed the last awesome character that was left in the Game of Thrones world right so oh yeah so do you do you have a problem with the with the scenes in fuck, Marine or what, wherever like where they where Danny's overpowered dragons rape an entire yeah that was fucking shit. retarded I but I'm not I don't I don't care about Marina anymore I never liked Danny I haven't liked her for like twelve seasons um, yeah I don't know why they would go and attack her knowing that two dragons were there when it le- looked like even one dragon could fuck everything up and it seemed like even when they saw Sir, uh, uh, not Cersei when they saw Daenerys they weren't even scared even though one dragon went and fucked all their shit up yeah I thought that was all retarded yeah story. see okay so so the biggest problem that I have with this episode is the scene that you mentioned before where. They were like, uh, where Jon Snow gets to beat up Ramsay. Yeah. I thought that was pure fan service. Besides that, I think that the the episode works in the way that you set it up, except with the added without. Okay, without it, taking away that last scene, I think one of the biggest points of this episode is getting what you want but not in the way that you want it so it's like a subversion of expectations because we have john but, snow okay i yeah. totally disagree i understand okay. what you're talking about in terms of subverting expectations so the grim rr whatever the fuck his name is one of yeah. his big thing, things is about subverting common tropes and then he goes out of his way sometimes to subvert those tropes but yeah. Yeah. We did, but that's not really what we got like going into this battle um Arya and john snow were similar and that as a viewer we know, you know Arya can't die, right, at the end of that fight. Because what the fuck was the point of watching all of that if Arya dies, right? We know that Arya's not going to die. Much the same way that Jon Snow has just been fucking revived. Why the fuck would he be revived to be brought all the way over here to die? We know that Jon Snow is not going to die, right? Mm-hmm. So we know that these are two char- Like, a character with plot armor is much less impressive if they're cognizant of their plot armor. And that kind of seemed like... Like, there's still tension. Even if you're watching a superhero movie, you're watching fucking Iron Man or Captain America or whatever, like, there's still some tension in these scenes, even though you know they're the fucking good guys. Like, they're the Hulk's not gonna die. Like, Iron Man's not gonna die. We know that. But there's still a little bit of tension. But this would be akin to, like, Robert Downer Jr. or whatever, like, walking into, like, a thing with a whole bunch of bad guys and just standing there as they shoot at him with guns. And he's like, dog, like, I'm the hero. You really think I'm gonna die? That's what Jon Snow did. This wasn't like a subversion of like what you wanted. It was literally Jon Snow decked the fuck out with plot armor, making bad decision after bad decision, and then being rewarded for it at the end. The only really, the only like terrible decision that he made was giving in and charging forward to save his brother, right? And then- yeah, but that terrible decision led the entire wildling army that he dragged all the way from the north, promising that he wasn't going to force him to fight his battles over and over again to their certain death. Had Sansa's army not showed up, that's a pretty big fuck up, right? Sure, but at the same time, Jon Snow, there was like basically no way for Jon Snow to win that battle anyway, right? Like in in military history, it's not terribly uncommon for a massively below numbered, like outnumbered force to charge recklessly, kind of recklessly into the other 
uh, into the enemy just to try and shock them and, and to push them back to kind of make an offensive, right? Sure, uh, but that's not what happened here. There wasn't. There was no strategy behind this. Like, no, why does no, John? There was so, no strategy from so the like, Wildling army, but he, there was from Ramsey. Yeah. Sh yeah. Here's a question: Why does John? Why did Stannis deserve to lose this fight, and Jon Snow deserve to win the fight? Because, well, from from a, why like. Why, like, within this storytelling, because that's how the arc completes, right? Well, yeah, but I'm saying just in terms of, like, what did the characters do to earn their victory? Like, Arya, as much as I hated everything with her fucking story for different reasons, Arya yeah. earned her victory at the end because she went through the training, she fought in the fucking darkness, she had her sword, and she figured out who she wanted to be. Arya, thematically, Arya earned her victory over the wharf. She did. I, but, the, but I don't think Jon Snow earned his victory. He didn't do anything to earn it. Like... Well, I think I think Jon Snow did earn his victory, just he didn't earn it in the way that we wanted him to earn it. But how did he with earn Stannis, it? He lost until Stannis. Sansa showed up. Sorry, Gun. So no, it was Stannis. Stannis is the whole Agamemnon par like parallel from from the Iliad, where Agamemnon sacrifices his daughter to the gods in order to get a victory, and he ends up getting fucked for it in the end. Stannis does the same thing, and he ends up getting fucked for it a lot more directly. But he doesn't earn his victory because he puts his faith in something other than man which is a big theme in the game of thrones universe is the only thing that you can trust is like your own will to succeed and your own effort you can't rely on gods because even when gods come through in the clutch they're they kind of fuck you up right like well except for all of daenerys's storyline or do dragons not count as god like things oh i guess yeah well whatever that's that that storyline is stupid both in the books and <laughs> okay right? like that's that's fucking retarded like dragons are overpowered creatures that can't die and the reason that i tolerate that storyline is because they're always shown to be those overpowered creatures and the only thing that kills them in the end is the like the wanton indulgence of of people being stupid like in rome right where they think that they're better than they are right? i guess but over and over and over again but, but we're not talking about daenerys yeah, yeah, we're not talking about this. so so with with john the completion of his arc in a better standpoint would be if he either knows about the army that's coming and yeah like stalling tactic or if he does some tactically cool shit or whatever right and then he, like the knowing about the army coming but we got a victory for john we got like fan service but it doesn't feel good because it doesn't come in the terms that we want it to come so and, like and i think I, f I understand what you're saying, but the problem is if that's what you're trying to get over to an audience that the and a lot of people I noticed a lot of people arguing this. But so you have to be really careful, in my opinion. You can't fill in the blanks with your mind. Okay, you have to think if the director wants you to feel like it's a hollow victory, then there are ways to get that across the screen that it's supposed to feel like a hollow victory. Maybe that's showing a ton of death of the wildlings and a general mood and gloom, and maybe it's a little bit more blue tint in the filter, and maybe it's John having an injury or something. There are ways to show that. Ah, we won, but it was at great cost. However, but what we got, we, but no, we didn't at all. I feel like you got the biggest jerk off. Jon Snow literally beating Ramsay to death with his fists on top of him, like, oh, I'm so fucking cool. The 1v1 with the shield and charging him and beating him up. And then Sansa at the end, I'm going to feed you to your dogs. And the dog's eating him. It didn't feel like the, like the directors were trying to give you a hollow victory. It felt like they were trying to say, look at how much Jon and Sansa totally fucked over Ramsay. Like, I look at that shit. I didn't really get that at all because, like, in, in the actual battle, you see the wildlings getting crushed in this like claustrophobic suffocating sort of scene and then john beating ramsey i'm sitting there being like jesus christ he's gonna literally kill him in not the honorable way and not the way that ned does and then sansa sitting there no 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 that's totally wrong no ramsey started off ramsey started off with a giant fucking law a great bow and john literally has a shield he's literally fighting from behind that's like the most ned starkey fucking if you ignore the prequel but when shit he gets on top of it do you are you sitting there being like maybe john is gonna kill him without in not the honorable way and but, he does die but it's okay at that point because like, ramsey is literally the baddest baddie bad guy like if joffrey grew up and had like a kid with himself like that would be yeah, like ramsey cersei's a fucking cunt and ned still offers her a way out but cersei right? is given more dimensions during the siege of the uh king's landing when cersei is talking to sansa and cersei's talking about the sacrifices you make for your mother and you understand that cersei does a lot of fucked up shit but she does but it for her children way, that was way later that was like ned didn't know that in the first season, Cersei is presented as this cold, all-powerful bitch, right? Cut, yeah, yet, sure, but... Honorable way out, and when Jon is beating up on, like, of course, the shield and the shooting the giant instead of shooting Jon and all of that is 
pretty dumb, right? But I'm, I'm saying that the actual moments where characters have to make choices, that's what's <coughs> interesting to me. And what's yeah. interesting is the choices that John made and Sansa made. Sure, but the only yeah. problem is that, like, Ramsay has l- is literally, and this is one of the things I was critical about Ramsay, Ramsay is literally the baddest, baddie, bad, 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 bad guy, yeah. the baddiest bad. So when John is sitting there beating him up, I don't think you really feel bad for him at all. And it seems like the, uh, the, the directors have been giving you this really one-dimensional, and they did it with Jon Snow's character once before, where Jon Snow literally fucking hung the kid, the Ollie kid, and he hung the four other people. And, it, and I don't know, it just, it feels like they're trying to, 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 to give you these, like, fan service moments where, like, everybody was like, oh, fuck Ollie, fuck Ollie, fuck Ollie. And it's like, well, shouldn't we have seen some kind of, like, does, is this, like, a big change for Jon Snow's character? Because it wasn't hinted at or talked about in any other way. Like, and now a lot of people were saying, like, well, after Jon's resurrection, he's a completely changed person. And maybe he is. And maybe that was part of the executing thing. Except that's not talked about or addressed at any other point. It seems like Jon Snow is still the very upstanding, very honorable person who's doing the right thing. Like, you can't tell me at one point, you can't say, well, look... Uh, Steven, Jon Snow is doing these things that are morally questionable right after he runs in and tries to sacrifice his whole army, saving his little, like, brother. Like, I, well, that you is can't... a stupid decision, right? Yeah, That's but like you a... can't, I don't think you can play both sides of the aisle there. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying that <clears throat> Jon Snow is trying to do what's best, but he, I don't, from watching the season and his, <clears throat> sorry, watching the season and his, progression from being resurrected the way that the character acts kit harrington and whatever it's all he has this stoic blank face he doesn't expound his thoughts like he did in his previous season he just does what he's supposed to do and in the battle of the bastards in the preamble to it he's confused he's scared he doesn't know what he's supposed to do he doesn't know how he's gonna win he doesn't know how to taunt he's and then this brings about a reversion when he sees his brother suddenly he's like whatever, 13-year-old Jon Snow from season one, and all he wants to do is bring his family back together, right? Yeah, but that's like, but that's... And he loses, and that is super crushing as somebody watching the series, you're like, oh my god, much like earlier in the season where Cersei reverts to vintage Cersei and, and Jaime reverts, that is really disappointing, but narratively, it still follows, and I know that's, like, it might not be the most... Like, Wait, I don't think any character has regressed besides Jon Snow I, like that. Who do you... Who, Cersei regressed to vintage Cersei? No, I absolutely, totally, one million percent disagree. I think Cersei has evolved into something that she has never been before. Uh, no, but at the beginning of the season, by the end of the season, she's like mega ultra... She's the new villain, as it were, right? She kills like a bunch of people. Yeah, well, but the big difference is that up until that point, it seemed as though Cersei's primary motivating factor... Not seemed, it was. She loved her children, and she wanted to do anything for her children. And she was very consistent in every single thing she did, right? She was very distraught when Joffrey was killed. She still knew... She knew that her current son, the king, was a good man and didn't deserve everything. And she was very remorseful when she talked to Jaime about this and everything. Cersei was still very much um doing everything for her family even if they were in her own fucked up ways the cersei that you see that destroyed the sept and all that shit and goes crazy fucking queen bitch at the end is an evolution it's a change in character she isn't returning to what she previously was i don't think well but you see in season one you see cersei with like much of the <clears throat> much of the power making the decisions pulling the strings working for her children and then as the seasons progress she becomes a little bit softer a little bit more well open to suggestion a little bit more powerless right especially as her father starts pulling the strings a little bit more broken and then at the beginning of season six or whatever we are we're at you see her sort of going back into that all-powerful state and she still cares about her children and that her story arc is her letting go of her love for her love basically and filling the void with hate but at the beginning of the season she kind of regresses to that sort of uh, character that we saw at the beginning of season one where she's you know using no I, I i think it's totally different i think that the only reason why we feel like cersei is totally evil in season one is just because we don't get enough screen time with her i don't think that she's actually crazy evil like she is at the end of season six i think it's just that you don't see much of her you're filling the void of you told you're doing what you told me not to do where you're filling the void of 
what's presented with what you're interpreting. Well, but I can do but I'm doing it, but I'm doing it from, from the, the, I'm sourcing the movie or I'm sourcing the film. If, if I were to say, what are Cersei's motivations in the beginning of the few seasons? I would say Cersei acts the way that she does because she loves her families and she loves her children. And then if you were to ask me, well, how could you defend that? Then I would say, well, during the siege of King's Landing, Cersei is talking to Sansa and you get an inner view of how Cersei views her family and how she's not happy with a lot of things, but she sucks it up because she loves her family. So if I were to ask you, can you tell me, can you defend with sources from the film that Cersei doesn't give a fuck about her family at all and is really just doing crazy shit in the beginning of the show because she's evil? Could you defend that? No, no, I'm not. And I'm not, that's not the point I'm making. I'm saying that that's, she still loves her family at the beginning of season six and she lets go of that love by yeah. the end. But her letting go of that, that season. but her letting go of that represents an evolution of her character that is unprecedented. The character that she is in at the that she is at the end of season six is not a Cersei that has ever been seen in all of Game of Thrones. No, but but I think that the Cersei in the beginning of season six is more similar that, to the Cersei at the start of the series than at the start of the previous season. She regresses and then grows. And the problem, I think the problem with Jon Snow is that this episode happens in episode 9, so we see very little of how this regression to early Jon plays out in the end. If, if, you, and I could be totally like, if he goes on to be the king of the north and be like the stand-up honorable character, as though his fuck-up and his resurrection had no effect on his character, then I will agree with you that this is one of the stupidest episodes ever but as a inceptive point for john making a really big mistake slipping back into old habits making old mistakes and then that growing that creating a rift between him and sansa that alienating him from the thing that he regressed into right he does it for his family and then he's losing his family because of that mistake if that plays out in the future like it does with cersei then that would be interesting that would be an interesting way to start it because but that would be, be but then it's like a whole waste of his entire story what was the point of everything that happened north of the wall well then the, like what was the point of all of like cersei becoming damaged and broken and blah blah blah, blah. it's whoa, 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 wait, wait. do you want to answer that because that's a massive thing that's a huge thing it's a totally different direction for cersei's character that cersei finally has the ability now to rule with an iron fist and she can do whatever the fuck she wants, and she's no longer tethered to her children in terms of decision making maybe she wants to pursue her relationship with jamie maybe she says fuck jamie and she wants to pursue her ability to be the most powerful fucking queen in all of westeros maybe she wants to go after foreign enemies and she doesn't give a fuck about protecting her children anymore like she did when she was messing with the snack ladies or whatever over in Dorne. Cer like the point of, Cer of Cersei's story, there's tons of implications to what yeah, happened. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Sure. That, was a, that was a really bad sure. example. Sure, but for Jon Snow, or same thing for Arya. When you, if somebody were to ask, as much as I hated all the Arya shit, what was the point of Arya's story? Well, Arya did all of her shit and learned, so, like, Arya comes out of her character arc achieving something. Everything she's been in, her time with the Hound, her time with the faceless, blindless, deafless, earless fucking dude or whatever, the dickless yeah. guy, she got something out of all of that, and she defeated the war for chick at the end and she did it in the dark like all of her fucking training and blind and with her sword because she remembered that she was Arya Stark and all of that that all has purpose and now Arya is coming out knowing who she is more than when she went in because how much of Game of Thrones has Arya spent you know denying who she is I'm not Arya Stark I'm with the hound I'm just a random little boy I'm a random little girl you know and now I'm the yep. faceless name right Arya has a purpose now now she really fucking knows who the fuck she is and she has and she's channeled that to, to be better than what she ever thought she could be but now when we go to Jon Snow well Jon Snow did all of these things and had this story but as soon as it came time to when Jon Snow's defining moment showed up he regressed and it could have been Jon Snow from season one and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference and it's like right. well and the interesting thing about that is how that regression is handled further in the show right when he charges out to save his yeah, brother but the regression is rewarded his army is saved by the dude the um you didn't even lose any important character i guess the big dwarf dude or the yeah, one giant guy died but the yeah, the one red-haired dude the is no important character yeah no died. important characters <laughs> died john yeah. snow wasn't even injured or maimed like jamie was when he fucked up on his journey you got the big payoff with him beating up the dude in the face and then him getting eaten by the dogs like there wasn't really i know people are gonna say shit like well now Littlefinger has the biggest army and blah 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 but like in terms of like thematically for john snow's character his whole story arc was entirely was rendered completely pointless because that scene was supposed to show us how fucking sick john had become as a character and it failed to do so that's like my primary assertion yeah and i think i think your assertion is that it was supposed to show that how awesome he had become and my yeah. idea is that it was supposed to do that but instead it showed us how he wasn't ready or he regressed or he was shittier than we thought him to be or shittier than he thought himself yeah to but be. again and i'm telling you that an interesting but, direction to take with the character a but, very disappointing one but not 
necessarily horrible. But, when I, but the problem that I'm telling you is that when a character does something that the viewer is supposed to perceive as bad, then the then the writer or director will give us something to reinforce those bad feelings. They'll maybe they'll kill a loved character. Maybe they'll maim somebody. Maybe something precious will be destroyed or lost forever. But we didn't experience any of that loss. We, there was no loss that the viewer had endured as a result of John's stupidity. So how can you tell me that we're supposed to feel bad that, that, that Jon Snow's character regressed? We, we, they didn't, what, or I guess that's my question for you. What was given to us as the viewer to make us feel bad that Jon Snow's character had regressed in that way against Ramsay? Uh, for me, it would be the, besides the actual execution of the battle, which was, again, suffocating, blah, 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 all that, all that stuff. I really felt I felt uncomfortable watching the way that Ramsey was handled by the two primary characters, right? Jon Snow lays into him and then whatever fan service moment aside, he stops. He does the honorable thing. He doesn't decide to execute him on the spot like Sansa later does. Sansa does something fucking horrible and a lot of people, a lot of normies are like, yay, cheers, that's karma, right? Yeah, but hold on, again, why is this, why are these things horrible when they're happening to literally the worst character in all of Game of Thrones that is because raping even, and murdering and stabbing and killing everybody? Because, because even, because as previously established, even horrible people that do horrible things, your treatment of horrible people reflects on you as a person. Remember when Danny nailed up like all of those horrible slave owners in the city and shit like that, and she got fucking wrecked for it? Yeah, like, but that, but she wasn't nailed. But that wasn't just that she was nailing horrible people. Like the point there, what I think this is a really good example because when the guy comes and complains to her in the temple, he specifically says all of those people that you're crucifying aren't horrible. My dad or whoever I think it was his dad. He was like, my dad actually didn't like the slavery shit and all of that. And you went and crucified a bunch of people that were innocent. And now we just want to bury the bodies like even at that point they were trying to three-dimensionalize They weren't just saying that well, you can't just fuck over like super bad people like here, I guess like here's a question Can you name a single character in Game of Thrones that would have deserved what Ramsey deserved? Can you think of a single person who is like as completely and totally 100% evil as Ramsey is? Well Joffrey Yeah, Joffrey is close and but I mean do you yeah, feel bad when he Joffrey. dies? You don't feel bad when he dies. Maybe you feel bad for Cersei but Joffrey yeah, is no. the same way. He gets fucking poisoned. And you're not thinking like, man, that was dishonorable. Like, Joffrey is the only other person that's even remotely comparable to Ramsay. And there's no sympathy whatsoever for his death in any size, shape, or form from any character, right? Yeah, from any character. But it, it, you're right. It is a dishonorable way to kill somebody. Yeah, but you're not thinking. But no one is thinking like, man, that was such a great dishonor to, for Joffrey. No one's thinking that, right? Like, the viewer well, isn't thinking like... Like, I do think, as presented in the Game of Thrones universe, that poisoning someone is the coward's way to kill them. That's that's made evidently clear, right? Well, it's to people in Westeros, they say that. But, right, and that's made clear to us. So, but, we, but, 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 but one of the bravest, one of the fucking hottest, and one of the awesomest characters, Oberyn, fights with poison. And we don't think that he's a coward. That guy fucking fought the fucking Mount 101, and they use poison over in Doran. Like, I think, in, I think there's a line somewhere in the, on the TV series where, like, poison is a woman's weapon or whatever. Yeah. But clearly in Doran, they don't think that because they all use poison on their weapons. And even Oberyn, one of the sickest fucking highest power level dudes in all the fucking show, uses poison in his spear. And I think that was that poison is a woman's weapon was made. In disparaging a uh, disparaging comment to Oberyn or something. Yeah, sure, like it's possible. Yeah, sure. sure. Wait, which is fine. Which is fine. That's dimensionalizing the different regions and saying that they have different things. Blah blah blah. But I still think that like I don't. I didn't personally. And and maybe this is the, you're you're right. This might be me ascribing more depth to something that the writers didn't intend. But I was really put off by the darkness and the lies and the deceit that sansa went to to get revenge right petty revenge which isn't a start. petty revenge revenge without consideration for what is honorable and just which is not what, Honor what? ramsey right? murdered her little brother by blood 100 percent blood brother yeah, um sure. fucking well, destroyed that uh the the guy um the the castrated dude um reek i don't even oh theon completely destroyed his life literally raped sansa probably multiple times and not just i don't even say raped like fuck like brutalized like that's the like, end what, so wait wait i i think a second. Have, like, does she have the right in the game in the universe does she have the right to do that to uh Ramsey. I'm not saying that Ramsey shouldn't die. I'm not saying he's not a total asshole. I'm saying that the honorable thing to do is to pass a sentence and execute them in the old way, as has been presented throughout the entire series with Rob, with Ba, with this, this and that. Like, 
it's not bad for him to die. It's the method of his death that I, I think should make you feel uncomfortable. I mean, I guess, but she doesn't even technically execute him. It's his own dogs that he says wouldn't even kill her. Like, it, maybe, like, I understand what you're saying, and maybe I would buy that if we had a scene where Sansa is walking up to Ramsay in a chair, and she takes out a knife, and she cuts his throat. Like, maybe at that point, I'd be like, okay, wow, this is pretty dark. But she didn't even kill him. She let his dogs in that he yeah, said I, would I think that's worse. I think that's darker, and she stands and she watches that. But it's, but in a way, it's not even. It's kind of like Ramsey buying his own fucking ticket to hell. Like it, that's his own dogs that he said would never turn on him and would never eat him. That he, he, he. It was his fault. Actually, I remember this because didn't Ramsey specifically say, "I haven't fed my dogs in a week and they're really hungry"? Didn't he, Ramsey specifically say that? Yep. So it's like he totally fucking bought his own fucking fucked up way to die. Like right there, like. Yeah, well, it, like I see, I see what you're saying, but I, th I still think for me, it's. I I think the pr the biggest problem with this episode and something that we're getting into this discussion is that the writers tried to have their cake and eat it too, regardless of the position. Like, sure, if you're looking at it from my point of view, then you have all of these really valid points that undermine my argument, and then there are we these valid points that, that Sansa undermine was raped your since argument. it happened like, the fact off that they screen. Linger on the shot of Sansa looking. The fact that you know Jon Snow goes lays into Ramsay a bit too long, and then people start shouting, you know, don't kill him and stuff like that, and he's still going right. Or the shot of like the claustrophobic battle and stuff like that. Like there are things that undermine. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. Okay, because because. Normally, this would be the part where I say, okay, I agree to disagree, but I totally disagree. I think that if you were to survey 100 Game of Thrones fans and you were to say, what emotion were you feeling when Jon Snow was punching uh, Ramsay to death? What emotion were you feeling? I think that less than five out of 100 would say they were feeling some kind of dread or uncertainty over Jon Snow. 95 out of 100 would have given the same answer they said when they saw um, Ollie getting hung. And that was, fuck yeah, fuck Ramsay, get fucked. Fucking beat him up, John. Fuck this dude up. Because at every single moment, you have not ever been given in all of Game of Thrones TV not a single moment to empathize with Ramsay ever. For no, and like, you're not. I'm so, not, I'm not so I don't. So I totally that. disagree. When you say that you're supposed to feel dread for Jon Snow, maybe you as a book reader, or maybe you as somebody that maybe is thinking about it a little bit more, might feel some kind of dread for Jon Snow. But I totally feel like that there was a massive emotional fan service payoff when you got to. And I saw my chat even when it was happening. There was a massive payoff when Jon Snow was laying into Ramsay. Oh, Ramsay just killed the one hot fucking wildling chick. He fucking killed and raped and murdered and skinned and flayed and shot arrows at. Fucking and he killed his own army with his fucking arrows. He did everything. And I feel like most people watching that are like, finally, Ramsey is finally getting what he fucking deserves. It feels so fucking good. Oh my fucking God. So awesome. That and, and this might be this this might be the, the crux of it is that I do th I think I am one of those five people that I don't empathize with Ramsey at all. But I do worry that Jon Snow is gonna do what what's like not right in order to do what he wants right or to do the unhonorable thing and just kill him right then and there instead of like doing what sansa does is taking justice into his own hands rather than doing the honorable thing by the old gods and blah 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 so maybe maybe i am just the the person who sees it differently and i see more depth in it because i'm looking for it than somebody who's just like cheering yay you know like same with ollie right i did not like ollie getting hung with no process it was a cold cut to him being hung and John walking away with no emotion. I was like, God, that makes me uneasy. I'm not like, yay, Ollie, fuck Ollie, right? I'm like, this is a kid. It's a kid who did something shitty because of emotion, right? And John's just murdering him for it. But sure. maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I am a, an exception. <clears throat> okay, so here, I, I, can like find, I can find common ground because maybe we agree here, right? So when you look at the things like Ollie or whatever, I agree that there is a lot of subtext going on with Jon Snow but I'm disappointed that we didn't get any of it on the screen. You had to fill in all of that on your own in your mind. Like the 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 Ollie and shit being hung by Jon Snow. Like maybe um maybe it should have cut to a shot of like a, like that red haired wildling dude with like a shocked expression on his face, right? Because the wildling yeah. people are badasses. So for him to be shocked at an act of cruelty from Jon Snow, like one shot like that for three seconds would completely and totally make me rethink on this, right? Yeah. One shot okay, of because then I would be like, okay, wow, Jon. Snow kill Ollie, like, and even that red-haired dude saw it and thought it was fucked up. Like, okay, maybe Jon Snow's heading down a scary path. But instead, it all instead it just feels like fan service because it seems like there are no negative repercussions for any of the shit that he's doing, right? 
Yeah, no, and I and I agree with whereas, you. Whereas, oh, and I'm I, sorry, real I, fast. Where, yeah, whereas before, when John, remember when that one guy said, "Fuck you, John Snow. I'm not gonna be a go be a builder. Suck my fucking dick." And John Snow took him outside and fucking chopped his head off. That was a scene where you could feel the gravity of what John Snow was doing. Right? That was not an easy execution. The guy was begging for his life at the end. You had Stannis watching on, so you knew that he was evaluating John Snow as a leader. You know that John Snow felt pressure from Stannis and all of the Night's Watch were watching him to be a leader and all the shit that he saw from from the very first episode where uh, Ned Stark um, beheads the one dude and does not himself as a leader like there was a lot going on there and that execution yeah. felt like it carried a lot of weight with it whereas it, the hanging uh, of Ollie and all of them just felt like fan service right well see I get I get the I get the different method of like okay you don't have to introduce it you can cold cut it and I agree mm -hmm. uh, panning to a shocked expression doesn't even have to be the redhead dude it sure be, I, I, I just say him because he's a character that there but it, you know right I, yeah, like, I just say the redhead dude because we all identify with him and we know like yeah, it would yeah be exactly. easy. and I think I think one of the best parts of this season was actually was kit harrington's acting because he's cold he's distant he's he's kind of struggling to even comprehend what emotions he's feeling he's like the few times he does get lines they're kind of meandering and go nowhere so maybe i'm just reading into the actor's performance more so than the and i just eliminate the stuff from the episode that i'm like meh but like uh i saw in your chat that somebody said somebody made the point of like it's like if the flaw of the episode is that all of the consequences of the decisions aren't portrayed then and there, then perhaps, and this is what I was getting at earlier, perhaps the payoff comes later in season seven and we see the re what the consequences of that reversal are we see yeah but that's not how between Sansa and that's John. not how people process emotions right you can't you can't do something in one episode and then four episodes later show consequences and it's like oh like th that massive payoff well, because the battle of the bastards that's a massive this is a ma this is a trope fest where we have the classic good hero versus the classic archetypal bad hero and it is the most and the good guy is down on his odds and everything yeah, and is gets fucked. A Deus Ex Machina right? the last Like, you literally, trope, you could yeah. have given this scene to fucking Mel Gibson and he could have directed it better. Or the fucking Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai shit, right? Like, the Mel Gibson setup with the Braveheart would have worked awesomely, where Jon Snow calls the whole army to retreat and everything seems fucked, and then the French Littlefinger dudes arrive and they fuck up all the um, British dudes. Like, that kind of a setup could have worked, right? And that would have been, and then maybe in the field of battle, Jon Snow would have encountered Ramsay and done some shit and beat him in a 1v1, right? Like, that would have been really sick. Um, but there were, like, so many different ways that I feel like it could have been handled that wouldn't have made John seem like a massive retarded cuck that had no character growth from season one. See, I again, I think that the they could have done the like the whole like him charging out to save his brother and then cucking his army for it. That would have been that would have been better if more. Oh, that was the Patriot, not Braveheart. Yeah. My bad. Oh, Sorry, go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I I kind of yeah. Um. If, if he charged out and did that and the whole battle goes the same way except more main characters die, I think we would feel more gravitas behind his regression and his mistake. Yeah, for and sure. The next, the next, in the next episode, he's talking to Sansa and he's like, you know, we have to stick together. And Sansa's like, yeah, I know. Right? Like, if that scene was more like, you know, we like Jon Snow's like, you lied to me, you dumb cunt, what the fuck are you doing? We're family, and Sansa's like, I don't trust you, or something like, some, or we got that intoned, rather than them being like, family, chipper family moment, and I th I don't know, I feel as though the episode is nowhere near as, as disappointingly cringy as many of the others, especially in season four and five. Sure, I agree that it wasn't, well, hold on, whoa, season four had Oberyn versus the Mountain, calm down there, buddy. Season five, was, I told you guys, okay. That was the, Oberyn was the best part of <laughs> sure. season, and then, but, Jon Snow had the stupidest fucking storyline of the entire series in season four. What was he doing in season four? He goes to that Craster's Keep and and fights those guys that took over. And then Bran is like watching in the distance being like, should I go see my brother? And, oh, yeah. the guys that killed the dude that fucked all the daughters yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that was, the in my eyes, the worst. But uh, no, the Sand Snakes are a lot worse. But... Like, that storyline was really stupid because that's, again, that, I think, destroys Jon's character a lot more because he is, like, doing 
He's like well, going for a reason, but not a good reason. He's not obeying authority. But but, 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 like, but that doesn't. That's all kind of like part of the journey, though. The big criticism I have with the Battle of the Bastards is it feels like this is a climax or a completion to a large character arc. I'm a lot more forgiving about dumb shit that happens in the middle. But this was supposed. This I would give more weight to something like this that is supposed to be obviously very climactic, right? But this is right, like if this is all climax, it's not the climax. It's not the end of John's story. Well, it might not. No, it might not be the end of John's story, but I mean, like, this is supposed to be like a really big part of his character it's the, evolution. It's the end of part two of his book, right? If it's sure, like, but it's like the testing of everything that he's learned as a character. At this point, right, this is and like he's failing, and that's and I think that's what's the important. But he didn't thing. fail. No one important died, and they won the battle, and they beat the bad guy, and everything he is wins the battle in his terms. He got bailed out by somebody that he fucks over like sixty minutes later, screen time, where he's being named king of the north, and he's getting all of this glory. Do you watch BoJack Horseman at all? No. Oh, okay. well, anyway, so he's he's getting all of the glory for something that he had no part in and something that he actively did everything wrong. Like, he did wrong. He fucked up, and he's getting named the King of the North. He, Littlefinger, bailed him out, and Sansa, they bailed him out, and he's getting all of the glory for it. If they don't address that, if they don't... It well, but I think that's probably what they want. Littlefinger seems to be like the guy that likes to pull the strings behind the scene. I think that's what Littlefinger would have wanted. I don't think Littlefinger wants to be named fucking King of the North. That sounds like a shit... I don't think that Littlefinger looks very happy as they're panning Littlefinger and Sansa's face at the last shot. Not the last shot, but one of the last shots. Oh, no, I totally disagree. I think everything went as Littlefinger wanted it to. He brought in his army. He swept up at the end. He's got a fuck ton of leverage now. He's close to Sansa and Jon Snow, who are poised to be maybe the strongest people in West. No, not stronger than Cersei, but like the second leading fucking power now, right? Well, and where Littlefinger and Sansa are talking, and Littlefinger's like, I just want you to my life, and Sansa's like, ew, no, sort of. Well, I mean, Littlefinger always gets fucking shunned by Sansa. He has, like, permanently friends on there. But um, I, I think that Littlefinger is probably pretty happy with his current position right now. Maybe. I don't I don't know. Like, maybe I'd have to rewatch the, the scene for the acting, but he seemed to be unhappy with the the way that everything went down and maybe he, maybe he wanted sansa as queen of the north instead of john snow because yeah. he feels like he has more pull over sansa than he does over john i mean that could yeah. certainly be possible sure but and um a real stark he's a bastard all of that shit sure so i th i do think that like if they play it out I'm fully ready to say that my opinion is horseshit if I see the next season and all of this is like, John, John is the hero and he's always been the hero and he's continuing his arc as though that never happened. That would be that would probably ruin the series for me. I might even just just give up on it. But if they play it out as though that regression was a big part and the fact that he doesn't really deserve to be in the position that he is and his he's alienating his strongest ally the, the god out of the machine he's making him angry and his sister if they play it out like that with all of those like subversive elements brought a little bit more to the forefront i'd say okay a little bit bungled execution but i see what you're going for and it's passable right it's 60 percent Gotcha. Rather than the like abject failure, if they if they end up just going through the uh, a through shot like the way that you're saying, then yeah, I I'd be like, all right, one of the worst, if not the worst, episode of the series in terms of story development in Jon Snow. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, I think we kind of agree. On yeah. Kind of on most things. I, I I understand how you say it, but. Yeah, and and again, I'm fully ready to accept that. I just see it in a more, like I. I'm adding depth in where most people don't see it because that's the way that I watch movies. That's the way that I process media. Sure. Okay. Hi, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for the chat. Yeah, I love you. Thanks for having a chat with me. I'll see you later, buddy. Yeah, see you. Good luck and lol. Yep, peace out.